Okay. Mm, right now, finally, we are getting to the, to the core of our course, I would say, because something that we're most interested in are the discretization methods for, for uh, engineering problems. Uh, so far, we've covered the, the governing equations and some numerical tricks. But really, right now we are stepping into the, into the topic and we will be starting with the fine difference method. Uh, to be honest, fine difference method, how, how many of you already know the method? That's good. Um, so, so that's good that you know. That's bad that I will be reintroducing that. Uh, and I don't want to skip the details of the method because I think... Um, some concepts and some numerical phenomena can be best explained um, using the fine difference method. Mm. So, for example, the problems with the advection diffusion equation with stability, the concept of the numerical diffusion that arises uh, in, in, in numerical schemes, these are the things that can be, in my opinion, at best calc um, shown uh, on the example of the fine difference method. So, so we will be going not so quickly through the method. Uh, I just want to make sure that you really understand the, the numerical instabilities, the wiggles, the artificial diffusion that, that arises. I want to make sure that you, want, that you know how to implement the boundary conditions and how to generate the, the matrix for the system. Um, if something isn't clear, please stop me immediately. Um, if if something's clear, you can you can give me a sign that it's clear. But I, I but I but I don't want to accelerate anyway. So. Mm. <clears throat> okay. So let's start with. Um, Surprise, this, this won't be the Laplace equation. Uh, it will be something different. Uh, let's start with the advection diffusion equation as it represents most of the scalar transport problems. Okay, I've got it right now in my notes. Mm. Or maybe let's move to the Laplace equation or Poisson equation. Mm, obviously, if we, for a minute, or not for a minute, maybe for an hour, if we drop the convection term, then we are left with the uh, diffusion equation. And let's, <coughs> sorry, and let's start with that, just a minute. Mm. What, we, what we already know um, is that if we want to discretize such, uh, such a second derivative, we can do it with the fine difference method that we have partially introduced um, before break. So we can do it this way. E I minus 1 minus 2 UI is E I plus 1 divided by h square equals f i and we need to have some boundary value problem that we are going to solve and our boundary value problem let's assume is is um, is defined by this equation um, we've got the domain that extends from x equals 0 x equals one. Mm. We, need to, we need to define the boundary conditions. And let's assume that for our system, u at x equals zero should equal five. And we want to have the Neumann condition at x equals one, and this one should be zero. 
um, for, an, for a finite difference method, or basically for any discretization method, we first need to introduce the discretization of the domain. So what we do is we, we introduce the nodes and we will have, well, finite differences between the nodes. Mm, so that's the discretization of space. Again, what, what the next step is, the next step is to discretize the equations. So we are moving from the partial difference equation. Uh, we are moving from the, well, partial, just one variable here. Uh, so we are moving from the differential equation to the difference equation. That's the discretization. And obviously we generate how many, how many equations do we generate? Let's assume we've got two different ways. We can either assume that here already the first node on the boundary is one. This is one of the conventions. The other convention would be, okay, let's assume the first node is the first internal node. Uh, let's start with that one. Then h equals one divided by n minus one. How many equations do we have? Ten equations. Yeah, we can say that. Mm, but just see that if you want to really generate equations that, that are defined by the differential equation, then you can only do it for the internal nodes because uh, you, you can't actually, well, First of all, you, you, can, you, you don't have a neighboring node anywhere here to, to exploit the, this formula, to write the difference equation at the first node. Like you've got no, no, no neighboring node. Um, that's the technical problem. Uh, but the motivation is that you, would n you need to impose the boundary conditions at the, at the ends of the interval so we, we need to replace them. So let's start with generating the matrix structure. Um, and how do we solve it numerically? Well, we need to generate the, uh, the matrix times the vector of unknowns. The vector of unknowns would be U1 to Un and some right-hand side vector. This row is the first row. This one is the nth row. Uh, so as already said, let's start generating equations from the second node, uh, not from the first node. So, well, what happens is we've got minus minus nu divided by h square because this, uh, sorry, because this coefficient multiplies e i minus one, then if we're, if we're um, assembling the equation for, for the second node, then what stands um, in front of u i? This is then plus two Nhi over h square. And again, something that, that multiplies u i plus one, and obviously in the matrix multiplication, uh, the, this coefficient we multiply, this multiplies u one, this one multiplies u two, and we need to have something that multiplies u three, and it's exactly the same as, as the coefficient in front of u one. Again, nu divided by h square. If you take i equals two, sorry, i equals three, then we're generating the next row in the matrix. Obviously, uh, already our stencil for i equals three, our stencil composed of that, that, and that node. So clearly, uh, there is nothing. Uh, 
um, from node uh, from node one that that would contribute to the equation. So we've got zero. This one is um, shifted. And what you would observe in the matrix structure is that these terms go until you are writing the equation for node n n minus one, because that's the last node for which you can write the uh, equation in full in its full form. Uh, so this one is again two ni h square here minus ni divided by h square. Ni, sorry, ni, minus ni divided by h square, and we finally arrived at the last nth equation. What can we do to implement the boundary conditions? We should approximate uh, the derivative uh, at the point <coughs> x equals 1 and uh, write uh, that numerical scheme uh, into the matrix and uh, in the point x equals 0 uh, we should just insert 1 uh, into the uh, matrix uh, at the point uh, 1, 1, yes, and the zeros to the other elements mm -hmm. of that row, mm -hmm. and the value 5 uh, to the uh, right hand side. Yeah, so let's start with the first equation. What we need to do is we already have a, an algebraic equation, so there is nothing to discretize. Uh, we just need to, to impose that boundary condition. So basically we need to introduce this equation to the matrix. And we see uh, u x at, uh, at x equals 0, so basically u1, hmm, u1 equals 5. And we need to introduce such an equation to our matrix. The easiest thing to do is to say, OK, so u1 equals 5, and everywhere here, we've got zeros, and this already satisfies our boundary condition. What we need to do here, as Adam said, we need to, we, we need to discretize that. So what kind of fine difference we can use? We can only use the backward difference. Basically, we would write u n minus u n minus 1 divided by h equals 0. Because we, we need to fulfill such a such a Neumann condition. Obvious, obviously, we can also write simply that. And this translates to having coefficient equal to 1 here. This is 1. And here we've got minus 1. It's minus 1 equals zero. Uh, what I forgot, just a minute, what I forgot is when this discretizing the equation, we need to we need to enter the um, the source values. If we've got if we've got um, just function that would be zero everywhere, uh, then we've got zeros. If not then we've got like f at x2, f at x3, etc. Uh, in a way, these are the known values that, that are well determined uh, because it's just the right inside the source term. Question? Uh, yeah, well, definitely this approach is correct, but I got clear how we can do better by using the main uh, equation and it's extracting u n plus 1. Uh, and using central uh, differential, we can have a better order. Uh, that's true. Uh, so basically what you say is that we can use the equation to generate a hypothetical value that would be here. 
and is the fine difference, central fine difference to generate the equation for that node. That's true, like if you, because generally, if you would investigate this, this approximation is, is the approximation of the second order. So basically the whole method would be of second order. When I do something like this, applying the fine difference of the, the, um, of the first order, then I'm actually lowering the order of the method to maybe not fully one, but something uh, really lower than two, definitely. Mm, yeah, that's, that's a smart way. I will skip this derivation right now. Uh, but it's a smart concept because we, we come to that during discussing the find the volume method where you will see that very, very often the boundary conditions in find volume method are implemented uh, using the concept of ghost cells. So basically the cells that do not exist in, um, do not exist in the mesh but are artificially added to, to mimic the presence of, of the solution on the other side of the boundary.